We need to talk. We invite your apprehensive listening. We shall begin now. I'll tell you this story like you've never heard it. Your mind and your emotions will want to reject it. Try to refocus and direct your mind to listen to this lesson I'm about to give you. Trust me. We need to talk. We invite your apprehensive listening. We shall begin now. Welcome to Colonel Marsh Hair YouTube channel, representing profitofwar.home.blog. Just want to do another reading from one of my website posts, since I know a lot of people don't read websites. The title of this is History, Which Narrative? It has become apparent by my course of study over the last 20-something years that the narrative pushed by academia is not the narrative that is provided in the historical record. The data is twisted and manipulated in order to force it to fit the pre-designated theories and dogmas of modern scholarship. So what is currently taught is pushed with mockery against anything that disagrees. And a lot of people talk about the arguments between academic scholars and whatnot, but they're not really arguing different concepts. They're arguing the same concept with the same theoretical basis and just arguing about details. So keeping that in mind, on my website I often bring up stuff that is actually currently taught by a lot of people, but it's ignored and people do manic mockery. You know, that's not true. Everyone knows the truth. Like, we learned it in middle school, right? So it must be true. I mean, okay. So why would academics want to squash the true narrative? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's really simple. They need to sell their knowledge and they need their published works to be viewed as authoritative, regardless of the facts. Uh, if you need an example, hit up Google, type in Sumer Firsts, that's S-U-M-E-R. And you'll see how a lot of books and reports and videos, all kinds of stuff, stuff that's been published and sold to the public. And, and you can see how many people's careers were absolutely built up by that topic. Now, what I want you to do next is Google Tel Amarna, Syria. It's T-E-L-A-M-A-R-N-A -A -A in Syria, not Egypt. And you can see from that story that scholars have known as a plain and obvious fact since the 70s that Sumer was not the oldest civilization. And that's not accounting for Hittite, Indus, and other civilizations that are really much older than Sumerian. So these scholars need to sell themselves as authoritative so they can make money. In anthropology, I call this political popularity. It's actually a method, it's part of theory development and selling your research. Um, the research has to be fueled with new theories that support the old theories. It's, it's the common practice. That's why when you get published, you have to be peer-reviewed. If you're not peer-reviewed, you're, you're probably not going to be published or won't be accepted. You have to be peer-reviewed to make sure you're on, on the same page. Everybody's copacetic and no one's in disagreement, right? We can't be teaching the truth. We have to sell the narrative. Okay. Uh, you can find basic lectures about theory development in scientific research. Theory development in scientific research. You can find that stuff all over the internet. They'll tell you exactly how to do it. So for these academic scholars, it's convenient for them to write history off as myth. It's a myth. It's also convenient to label it as prehistory. No, oh, it's too old. We can't validate it, right? These are two methods used to introduce real facts and yet at the same time let you know that they're not dependable facts and they aren't evidence. So at the same time, the system has produced what I call uh, the two hands of Gog and Magog. I stole that from my buddy Sean. Uh, Gog and Magog are basically the left and right of the ancient civilization of demonic power mongers. It's kind of like what we have today, Republican versus Democrat. They're all evil, you know they're all lying to you, but you pick one and vote for them. So the two hands of Gog and Magog, uh, two sides of the coin narrative, and they produce arguments that attract attention. 
right? You can find these arguments anywhere. But the two arguments are equally debased and non-constructive. They're distractions from the true narrative and are designed to confuse and keep people from the truth. You have to pay attention. So academia is an echo chamber, and I went over this in my, uh, I think it's on my definitions page. So it's really academia is an echo chamber. You go ask anyone what they know, they'll just parrot what the last person told them, who parroted what the last person told them. You get a whole bunch of people in the same room, they're all just going to bounce it around the room, and they're, no one's going to think for themselves. So this echo chamber is dependent on mockery. It keeps the, the peer flow going, right? Everybody has to support you. If you don't be supported, you be mocked, okay? So whenever you see mockery used as an argument, you know that it is system academia at work. Oh man, everyone knows this. We learned it in middle school. Best argument I've ever heard, right? And where do you get this stuff? Are you a conspiracy theorist? I mean, I mean those are common mockeries. Obviously, if everyone learned the basics in middle school, it's got to be true, right? I mean, right? If it's in the textbook in elementary school, middle school, high school, and college, it must be true. And let's totally disregard the fact that everything in textbooks, unless you're paying five to ten grand for your one or two chapter textbook, everything in textbooks is at least 25 years old, and that's being generous. Okay? I mean, I was reading stuff that was so old, it was mind-boggling that it still existed in print. And I was paying a few hundred dollars for a very small textbook of really old stuff that made no sense. Academia relies on scholasticism, political pressure, and public education. These are weapons used against you, against your mind, against your ability to think for yourself. You know, aside from the whole issue with bad air, bad water, fake food, lighting that emits uh, gases that harm your brain, being injected at birth with toxic substances that brain damage you and give you a, a minor lobotomy, and you know, the list goes on. Uh, so aside from those weapons, for what faculties you have left, they use scholasticism, political pressure, and public education. Political pressure and public education and scholasticism, you can find mirrored, echoed in the media. Some argue that mainstream science would never hide data. After all, they argue and debate amongst themselves. Well, they argue and debate the currently accepted dogmas. Most renowned scientists only provide the same data in different ways. They really don't break free from what they're told to believe. If you pay attention, you can see that they only base their concepts on the same old modern perspective. I want to pause there. When I say modern perspective, modern in my perspective, since I've been reading ancient, ancient, ancient texts, uh, for 20 years and studying ancient cultures and how the ancient people did things. Um, to me, anything basically um, 400 BC on is modern. Nothing's changed. Uh, I mean, you could even push it back to about 4000 BC and say absolutely nothing has changed. Um, that's modern to me. So they're pushing the same old modern perspective, right? The arguments are just the same old story. The baseline assumptions stay the same no matter what they try to prove. The facts presented are not provable. I challenge you to try it. Go prove something that they say is a plain fact. And these facts presented contain so much assumption that to me, it's ridiculous that anyone believed it in the first place. The, the only way I can see that anyone actually initially believed it was that it was a really smart guy saying it and using really big words. But anyway, yeah. It's just ridiculous to me that people believe this stuff. Uh, once you look for evidence and proof, pretty much everything they sell just falls apart. You see that it's supported on individuals and their ability to cull people. It's not supported with evidence. It's all politics. So this, the stuff they provide as 
basic fact that everyone knows can only be supported with lengthy explanations and lengthy theories. And the theories themselves need lengthy explanations. Nothing more to support the stuff sold as fact. If you don't believe me, check out the story of the dig at Huatlaco, Mexico. Uh, basic science process is to refute facts, change the facts, fix the data to make it match the theory, whatever you got to do. Uh, especially if the facts go against already published academic premises. And you can look up Huatlaco, H U E Y. A-T-L-A-C-O, uh, just wiki it, read the story. Now, get into real history and prepare, uh, prepare yourself to unload the trash that you've been sold in school, on Wikipedia and Google, by the government, all of them, right? Uh, by religious leaders, all of them. Get out of the system. Start preparing yourself to mentally exit the system, okay? If you don't prepare yourself to receive basic truth, you'll never receive basic truth. You'll just keep charging forward with the same old paradigms and the same mind-blocking attitudes that everyone has had for the last 4,000 years. So... When you do research, and, and anyone can research, all you have to do is pay attention to what you're reading. If someone says, this is a fact, find out who said it's a fact. Find out what their premises were. What, what were their principles for living? What did they believe? Just drag it back to where it originated, right? Okay? Don't rely on the words of other people. Like, even if you're... you're into the Bible and you want to do what the Bible says the translation you have is the words of other people you need to look it up and see what it actually says don't rely on the words of other people pick it apart research compare contrast find the puzzle pieces and put them together you can't force them together they will go together right? even a child can do it I mean even when it comes down to the biblical stuff I mean if you even if you have uh, difficulties with brain function which I have some you can still do it it's the truth is simple alright so it took me about 20 years to figure this much out but I assume it took that long because I'm just slow at things I didn't really have a guide everyone kept telling me just believe what we tell you I had to do my own searching. So, personally, I'm not dependent on academia in order to protect my investment in my career. Okay? I'm not producing things to protect my lifelong investment in a career that I hope will get me through retirement. Nothing I say is making me money. Okay? I don't need to be accepted among the scholars. I, I really don't want to be accepted among the scholars okay uh, to me this is a key to wisdom because once you place your future in the hands of a system you are dependent on that system and need to produce the systems accepted results that's just how it is so keep in mind whatever someone's teaching including me they're providing information from their preferred narrative this is why it is important to think for yourself and try to see the underlying narrative. It's impossible to provide unbiased information. You can try really, really hard, but it's not possible to take out all bias. No matter what, even if you're talking about up and down, you have a bias of which direction is up and which direction is down. There's always going to be a bias, but it is easy to put more effort into it than academia does. So keep in mind that I present researchers on my website that have decent resources and point toward the true narrative. Most of them are specialized in one arena of research, but their conclusions are the most accurate to match what I see 
as the underlying historical narrative. Uh, so you can find a lot of those resources all over profitofwar.home.blog. Okay? Lots of YouTube videos, lots of websites, PDF downloads, all, anything you need to, to get going on your learning how to think for yourself. So I've put about 20 years into researching as much as possible along every branch of science and religion I could find. So I consider myself a meta-analyst, even though I don't do it exactly the way that meta-analyses is done academically. And I think I've clearly explained why. So I draw conclusions from unbiased data by comparing the research of other people. And what that involves is reading their research, taking out their bias and their preferred narrative, down, strip it down to the bare data, compare it with everything else, okay? That's how I came across the underlying narrative of history, science, religion, you name it. So I find the resources on my website extremely helpful to explain what I think I'm getting into. What I think that I've hit on uh, is, is a lot of clues. I think I know it, don't know that I know it. All right, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know that I know it. And I think anyone who says, I know the truth, I have it all figured out. Well, they don't have it figured out and they really don't know the truth. They got a quick glimpse right before the train they were on went into a tunnel and they blacked out, right? So I think the people that I present on my website have better presentations than what I could provide. And they, they're more entertaining. They're filled with information. They have a lot of research behind them and they have a lot of experience, okay? Now you'll find that a lot of them actually still are dependent on things that I criticize. That's okay because they're pointing toward the truth. That's all you need. So, I wanted to drop this bomb on you on YouTube and uh, encourage you to visit profitofwar.home.blog and check out all the crazy stuff I've written because if you have an open mind and you've seen the detritus of society and you've seen that we're not evolving we're actually devolving. Things are getting worse and worse and worse. Everyone's losing control and everything's about to fall apart and everybody's screaming for the government to fix it. You know, uh, if you come into my website with an open mind, ready to, ready to learn, not learn what I'm teaching, but use what I teach to boost your own research, okay? You go into that, it will blow your mind and change your life, hopefully for the better. So, be blessed and bless. Yahweh bless you.